Okay. Um, so we'll begin with uh, discussing why do we need reference implementation and what does it contain? We will make uh, we'll switch between uh, Leo Designer that shows how the uh, the tool chain was modeled and the code. Uh, and we'll uh, have a bit less focused technical details. Uh, what's happening? It's all good. Don't worry. Perfect. Um, and we will uh, focus a bit more on how you can get started and what features uh, the reference implementations uh, provide. But we're happy to take more technical questions on the forum. Uh, the reference implementation. Um, we consider it to be important uh, to, first of all, have some reference that vendors and users can test their solutions against um, in order to uh, basically get help in uh, capturing the behavior of uh, OSLC servers that are compliant uh, with the spec, uh, they conform to the spec, and also to learn how, what are the building blocks of such servers. So this is the twofold purpose of the reference implementation. We have implemented four uh, domains, requirements, architecture, quality, and change management uh, domains. Uh, we used Eclipse Leo open source SDK 4.0 to, to do that. And change management has already been upgraded to Eclipse Leo 4.1, which is due for release later this month. Um, we also, Show, deliver an OSLC-based client uh, that populates all those four servers with the dummy data using OSLC um, calls. Uh, actually, most of the code um, that uh, you'll see uh, demonstrated today uh, has actually been generated uh, using Leo Designer. Uh, this is how the tool chain looks like uh, in its uh, finished form. And I'll actually leave uh, the PowerPoint and switch to Eclipse to show you the finished model in real life. And I'll put the camera somewhere on top. Um, here you see uh, four servers, uh, the resources they expose, and that some of the resources have links to resources exposed by other servers. Uh, there are multiple views uh, of this model and we can drill down into certain components. Let's start with uh, CM server implementation. It begins uh, looking like a standard OSLC meta model uh, showing uh, the service provider catalog containing multiple service providers and so each service provider having a number of OSLC services uh, exposed on it against certain resources. Uh, as you see for the reference implementation of the uh, change management server, we've added a number of selection dialogue, uh, creation dialogues. Uh, each service has uh, properties uh, that allow you to customize uh, the behavior of this specific uh, service. And most of those properties are fairly self-explanatory. We also have a creation factory for change requests uh, and query capability for individual resources. Now what you see are resources that, um, the shapes of the resources that OSLC services manage. Um, those uh, are actually standard resources that have been described in OSLC domain specifications and Eclipse Leo provides a project called domain models that allows you to readily reuse uh, resource uh, definitions, both vocabulary and shape definitions of some standard domains. And we can navigate to the diagram representing um, the change management domain. Uh, and here you can see the uh, shapes, which double also as RDF classes. Uh, you see properties. Um, and those uh, resources 
are generated into Java code that you can include through Maven. Uh, one interesting uh, detail uh, from what I showed you is that you can do design your own domains that are proprietary to your enterprise use case. And just as we did, you can reuse those uh, domain models across multiple projects within uh, your enterprise that use OSLC. Uh, now that we looked at how it was modeled, let's uh, jump to the code. So I'll give you a link in the chat and you can follow along together with me. In order to follow, you will need to click on the Gitpod ready to code link. Uh, Gitpod is a service uh, that provides you with a Visual Studio uh, code and uh, a Linux server environment in the cloud so that you don't actually need to install anything on your machine. Uh, you will need a few minutes to sign up through GitHub if you have a GitHub account. And it will take three, four minutes to create the pod and to uh, perform an initial Maven build of the four SLC servers. But all the configuration uh, should be there and you should be able to uh, follow all the steps. And by the end of the talk, you should be able to uh, go through uh, four OSLC servers running uh, on your machine as well. Uh, this being a live demo, uh, there is obviously a risk, uh, uh, but let's hope for the best and see what we have here. So here we have four uh, servers that have started and we also have the client that actually failed to register the, to fill the servers with dummy resources. Uh, this is actually because Gitpod requires ports to be open. They're private by default. So you should click on the ports down below and uh, click on the lock icon. So we don't open this port. And once it's done, we can rerun this command. I will, for brevity, remove the sleep. And so this population um, is done through OSLC requests. So these are OSLC post requests. Um, and something has failed. Uh, which is probably due to, uh, there are some quirks when the Git pod brings our pod back from sleep. And uh, as you see, I, I didn't start this uh, pod just now, but we can restart the server and rerun. Uh, if you find some more specific description of the bugs, please report them on the same Git repo. Okay, so now that we've, uh, started the service and populated them, we can open a few of their web pages. And as we did in the, in the Eclipse walkthrough, we'll start with the change management server. So you have two main entry points uh, to the server. One is a set of uh, debug pages uh, that we generate to help you navigate through the instances of the resources that you've modeled in the adapter model view. So you start with the service provider catalog, you can click into uh, service providers uh, and so forth. And the second one is the interactive swagger uh, or open API user interface, which allows you to get more hands-on with uh, OSLC uh, REST requests uh, without leaving the browser. So let's keep exploring uh, the service provider that we have. First, we can uh, open the query capability for change requests and verify that our resources that we've uh, created through query client have indeed loaded and we can test paging. On the hover, you see resource preview. And when we open one of the resources, you see resource details. Um, 
An interesting uh, detail is that uh, the properties of the resources are rendered uh, not on this page directly, but instead uh, these are iframes that embed um, UI preview, uh, resource preview dialogues, and you can see small and large uh, dialogues. Also, a uh, useful page is the uh, OSLC shape description. Uh, these shapes look very, uh, these tables look very similar to how uh, shapes are described in OSLC standards, uh, but they're very useful if you're designing your own enterprise domains, you will get those pages generated for you just like standards have uh, without any extra effort. And these can serve as useful documentation for other users in your organization. We can also see how selection dialogues are supposed, are generated, but also how they can be used. And we can type some query um, in order to filter, filter out some resources through a selection dialogue. And when we click OK, the parent page, the one that embeds uh, an OSLC selection dialog in an iframe, obtains the information about the selected resource through, through the specified interface, which in this case is post message. And just to show you that uh, this is, um, this is an, a useful debug page, you can open the source code and see how it is implemented. It's a very simple iframe and a very modest amount of JavaScript used to react to those uh, OSLC post messages uh, as specified by the standard. Now that we looked at the graphical part of the server, we can uh, check how the API requests can be made against the OSLC uh, REST endpoints. Uh, we can begin with the query, uh, the same uh, query we did graphically. Uh, we're not going to filter any resources and we're going to request the first page that comes by default. When we click execute, we'll get a representation and a response in a default um, representation, which is uh, RDF plus XML. And you'll get the information you need to reproduce this request yourself uh, from the command line, which can be easily adapted to uh, the program code. You can also switch to receive a different representation such as turtle, which is uh, easier for consumption for humans. And as you see, the server renders the same information uh, in turtle. We can then take certain information uh, and we can proceed to make other requests. For example, if we want to re receive information, uh, retrieve a full information about this uh, change request, we can copy its ID and go to another endpoint, fill the ID and execute the query you'll see how the, requ the query request to your eyes formed and you'll see the contents. Now you see that there is a refired statement here that links to a requirement, uh, which is a resource in another, uh, in another OSLC server. Um, to the best of my knowledge, Swagger does not allow you to perform uh, requests across uh, servers. So we'll switch to Insomnia, a uh, popular REST client to continue the request. And when we paste this URL and have proper uh, request to headers, uh, such as basic authentication and turtle accept format, we can make a request and receive the resource. Okay, so we're actually at 17 minutes now into the presentation and uh, we're happy to, to do a bit of Q&A. 
and uh, we'll see if I need to do some more demo. And I'll be happy to hear if anyone managed to to sign up on Gitpod and get your servers running. Sean, uh, sorry, <laughs> Andre, um, still. Uh, where is the, the, the in this in the, those servers? Where is the data coming from? When, I mean, one one of the challenges when you develop a server, right? An OSC server is is that you typically connect to an existing provider with its own API. So so where where are you actually doing the work? Let's say I want to develop an uh, a change management server, I don't know, to Team Center. Okay. Siemens Team Center. So, so where is where, where where are you specifying the the actual transformation of of their requests to the concrete API of, of the provider? Right. So these and, are and, what, and, what, and the other question: What is the provider here in your example? Right. So we obviously wanted to build a vent reference implementation. So these are OSL, pure OSLC servers. So. They're not adapters to some third-party systems. They're OSLC servers on their own. So there is no uh, backend system that we tra translate our requests to. Our servers uh, only manage OSLC resources. They, they store them. They uh, perform operations on them. Um, they keep them in memory, but uh, you can see the code, how they were implemented. And uh, there is a very uh, nice separation between the generated code and the code that you can uh, write yourself. Uh, as you see, we have common blocks uh, that begin with start of user code and end of user code. And you can simply replace the, uh, the sample uh, reference implementation code uh, that is serving the minimum valid OSLC response. Uh, with API calls to your system. So you basically, as long as it has an SDK for Java, you can include that SDK and write a little bit of code. And all you need to return is say an array list of, of certain items. So uh, in the reference implementation, it, it comes with the data or, or you have to It is to in memory. It. So yeah, but how, how does it get to memory? That's a question. It, it, when, when the server starts, it creates the objects. Ah, okay. So it's hard, sort of hard coded in the. In yes, the it is. Okay. So actually, we, we, we thought of doing that. Uh, and then we thought that it would be good to add a bit of separation. So we have a separate uh, client written in Kotlin uh, that I'm showing you here. Okay, uh, not in the last version that I worked with. Uh, it, it should be there. It, it's called client toolchain under a source. And so this client uh, basically. Uh, traverses the uh, servers. It starts with their um, service provider uh, catalogs. It then discovers creation factories. Uh, and then it populates those creation factories with, say, 50. So I, I work with a version one and a half years ago. And, and yes. back then it was still uh, built into the server. Um, and by the way, I could follow you um, to the server, which is nice. Um, and we implemented um, a persistency backend uh, based on CouchDB, where you could store whatever you wanted to store. It was quite uh, flexible to configure. Um, unfortunately, we never made it kind of open source. So you built on, on, the, on the reference implementation, Ralph, and extended that, right? Right, yes. Yeah, yeah. I hooked um, basically the code that uh, Andri just showed uh, where you call the services, we put in the, uh, there, there's the same code is there for the objects and we put in um, a backend. Uh, so I implemented an, an, an interface that could store this information in um, CouchDB or uh, MongoDB if you would like to, using Java reflection. So you could basically configure what you wanted to store where and it would just put it as a document and um, add an ID and stuff like that. So we, we had a debate on whether to use a store, and we felt maybe that will require yet another installation of a component. 
and that's why we chose to do it in memory one just to keep it. More. There are always drawbacks. Yeah, yeah. And the the point is when once you have a backend, then uh, it is not stateless anymore. So if you restart it, you 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 end up with the same state that you had before you stopped it, right? Um, so you cannot start the same scenario over and over again. You you would have to kind of have some mechanism to delete the databases and re um, reset them to uh, some initial state. Uh, uh, just to go back to Aaron, your question, Aaron, I think the, 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 to clarify the purpose of the reference implementation was to just to explain that, you know, to give a reference on how you can quickly get started on implementing a CM or RM and uh, without tying it to a particular application that gives a quick start for someone. So it's really more part of documenting and you know explaining how you can use OSC domains and so you know implement yeah. but, but I, I think the, the ultimate use case is, is it usually that someone wants to to create an adapter right yeah I mean people point. are not just going to develop new maybe there are some people that would new requirements tools yeah. just from the ground up in OSC I mean the 90% the, the scenario is that you always want to connect it to some yeah closed world kind of application right like a plm system or... but this should this should still help you because if you start yeah. with, you know if we tie it to a particular one then we've tied it to one and that's what we chose not to do that so that you can easily choose your yeah, own. absolutely absolutely so that's fine. Now, does it also so what about trs the track resource set you you simply implement how you do trs to each extent you have to modify the code if you... I think we, we either implemented it on one of them or we plan to, but they are, if you look at in Leo, you can drag, maybe you can show that, Andre. you can just drag and drop a TRS and then you have a TRS support. And we also have a support for authentication also. Uh, and the, because we wanted to prepare it so we can integrate it with a Jazz application, for example. Uh, when, when I looked into it, the TRS was in memory. Exactly. So that's also... Um, a, and yeah. and I, I implemented actually a TRS with a database backend. And that I struggled a bit because um, if you want to store it in a database, then you don't really want to store the pages. You want to store the entries and then recreate the pages. That was a little bit tough to get that working. So here you can see uh, the palette. Uh, that you can basically use when you're developing this model. And you can drag and drop, uh, in addition to the creation factories, query capabilities, selection, and creation dialogues that I showed you before, uh, we have the in-memory TRS, as well as a triple store, um, persistent store of resources, uh, and store with authentication, yeah. as well as uh, the authentication for the, the OAuth uh, yes. authentication for the server. It's all of support. Yeah. So Ralph, you also you... have a preview. You also have a preview. Preview? Preview page, yeah. Uh, that's part of, that's default part of uh, crude services. Yes. You get that. You don't choose that. Uh, uh, I assume you, you are talking free. about the... These ones. The... What we sometimes call reach hover. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 These things. Yeah. Right. That's part of getting the... If you get a resource, you can choose to get an XML or a compact version or a preview, small or large. Um, they leave a little bit to be desired, to be honest. Um, but for a demo, it's it's really really yeah, good enough. <laughs> again, I think this. I mean, if you do it with a real backend, you might choose your own technology on how you do HTML. So we try to keep all that stuff outside of Leo's designer because you know we just want to keep it clean and simple so that you can integrate your own technology for those kind of things. It's just to get the data out is really the focus. And if there are C CSS wizards and yes. React ninjas, we do well to contribute. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not an HTML guy, so I just, I, I, I just lost out on those. Yeah. This looks much better than it used to look a couple of years ago, thanks to Andre. You should have seen the ones I had to make. Um, so, <laughs> thanks to Twitter Bootstrap. Yeah. Um, so. All right. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have uh, three minutes before the next talk. Uh, we can um, actually continue if we... I, I have a question from, sure. uh, I think we plan. I mean, uh, this is a quick demo. I'm not sure how new it's for people, but I mean, we're always looking for both for the open, the reference implementation is part of the open project and the is part of the Eclipse Leo project, Leo designer. But, you know, again, this is driven by needs and stuff. So if there's any input on where we want to go, I'm aware, for example, we want, you know, of course you want TRS, a proper one and stuff, but uh, it would be nice to hear from the community, uh, both who's using it, if any, it's always surprising, but also like, what, what are we missing? Uh, 
Well, the next the next topic would be global config, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. But these are these are the kind of uh, projects that would require some con uh, contributions, also. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At the moment, it's uh, yeah. So actually, from from our side, CM could be the next big thing we want to introduce in this. So, so we used it for a, for a presentation system, uh, actually an integration to another provider where we we pulled in the data using an interface. Um, so something like um, I would say it's like, like proxy information. We pulled yeah. that from the other system and stored it in the in the back end, so that we had uh, the the main idea was being able to browse those elements um, and and be able to actually have a TRS for that. So mm -hmm. that we could that put into our jazz reporting stuff, and use it in uh, in the um, other tool that we um, showed on uh, on Tuesday, so mm -hmm. that we could have those queries running over that data in the, the in that other system. Okay. okay, so you found it useful, I guess. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we had some issues, um, you know, uh, for whatever reason, I never I could never re regenerate the model because then everything was done and dusted didn't work anymore another colleague could so i just didn't do that <laughs> but, we'll help out. A... yeah but i mean it wasn't worth it right I, yeah. I i was able to do all this other stuff with um, java and and that was fine and she was able to just gen regenerate the model if needed and another co uh, colleague uh, worked on the modeling on on the elements um, right. to to get our um, kind of mm. data um, system correct and and mm. yeah it was not really nice. Um, if we wouldn't have had that, we were absolutely not being able to do this, um, I think. Yeah, I think it's useful mainly for quick prototyping and getting started. And then maybe you maybe you would move away from it and do something. Uh, but yeah, it gives you a, a bootstrap your code to start with. And... Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Raf. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. OK. Um... Yeah, and just to add, uh, some of you commented on the outdated uh, documentation. Uh, we do acknowledge that this is a problem and it's uh, hard to get uh, more resources. Uh, one thing you can do is to actually report problems uh, because uh, when you do not report problems and we don't hear about um, uh, people having problems in the documentation, we assume that it either works perfectly or Nobody needs this uh, information anymore. Um, what you can do, is, this is the main website uh, that provides information about Eclipse Leo and some uh, OSLC starting information. You can go to the bottom of the uh, page and click on report an issue uh, to report some issues you found if something doesn't work or a version is old, or you can click on edit page and it will bring you hopefully to the right place. Uh, we actually changed some branches, so it now leads to, to the wrong branch, but I'll try to fix that. Um, you can also just report a problem on the forum. If, you, if, we, if, if it's visible for us that there are certain problems, it will help us direct our focus rather than just knowing that a lot of information is outdated. All right, I'll stop sharing and we will proceed to the next presentation.